Hi, welcome back to another edition of the DBS View. This is a tale of two cycles, the US versus Asia X Japan equities market cycles. One is maturing and the other only just beginning. US equities are entering a more dangerous phase as the S&P 500 index pushes repeatedly against a 2000 point psychological and technical resistance. This has been a market that has not had a decent correction since early 2012. The last 10% correction in the S&P 500 was in the second quarter of 2012. And since then, there's been this familiar pattern of shallow corrections followed by rebounds mostly off the 100-day moving average, and then continuation of the uptrend. Now this time, the index may struggle a bit more against that round number resistance, particularly as technical indicators are signaling near-term overbought. But the fundamentals favor the index eventually breaking above 2,000 points and sooner rather than later. Equities valuations in the US are not cheap, but they're not at extremes either, not yet anyway. It is true that the cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio for US stocks is at its 2007 high. But then again, no two cycles are exactly the same. And there is no reason to believe the US bull market should terminate simply because the index price to earnings valuation had reached its 2007 high. It is worth remembering that the cost of money is much, much lower today than in October 2007. In October 2000, 2007, the Fed Fund's target rate was 5.25%. Uh, the policy rate today is 0.25%. And interest rates are important as they are the discount factors for valuations. The lower the discount rate, the higher the valuation and vice versa. Meanwhile, the US economy continues to gain growth momentum with very little inflationary pressure. This goes some way to explaining the decline in the 10-year US Treasury yield since the start of the year, notwithstanding the recovery in economic growth in the second quarter, which tells us that rates could continue at historically relatively low levels even after the Fed starts to raise rates, possibly by the second half of next year. That is, rate hikes are likely to be modest and gradual even after, even as the economy gathers growth momentum. And don't forget that U.S. corporate earnings have been doing pretty well too. So, so yes, this is a maturing cycle with more risk, but it is not necessarily the end of the cycle. Paradoxically, at more mature stages of the market cycle, it is easier to find believers than skeptics. And so it is with the U.S. market today. Conversely, at the earlier stages of the market cycle, it is harder to find believers than skeptics. And so it is with the Asian markets today. Memories of the sell-off of the middle of last year are still fresh, and skepticism towards China has been the consensus. But we reckon this is where the opportunities are over coming months. There appears to be a lot of upward momentum in Asia X Japan equities markets following technical breakouts a few months ago in the MSCI Asia Pacific X Japan, in the MSCI Emerging Markets, in the Shanghai Composite Index. The cycle of underperformance for Asia X Japan vis-a-vis -vis the US from mid-2011 appears to have turned. Middle of this year, we warned that breakouts on the upside were likely for Asia X Japan equities for three reasons, and they are worth repeating. One, stronger economic growth in the US with low rates and yields. That is, the decline in, uh, the decline in US Treasury yields despite stronger economic growth has delivered Asia a period of stability. The second point is Asia's continued superior economic growth and growth potential. In the focus on declining rates of growth, it seems to have been forgotten or at least downplayed that Asia continued to grow much faster than the developed economies of the US, Europe and Japan. So all right, China's economic growth has slowed to around say 7.5%. Well, that 7.5% that the US, the Euro area and Japan wish they had. And given emerging Asia's lower income bases, demographics, urbanization trends, these growth rates are likely to be sustainable for decades to come. Third reason, valuations. In a clearly more expensive world, investors will rotate. They will rotate across markets and they will rotate across regions. And that rotation has already started with 
net flows coming back into Asia x Japan. And those flows are likely to continue on the above reasons and valuations. US, Europe and Japan are all trading at two times price to earnings relative to index earnings growth. That is, it has a price to earnings to growth multiple of two. In Asia, this is around one. And importantly, the downshift in China's economic growth appears to have hit a bottom. Money supply growth appears to be turning around. And there will likely be more granularity to already announced reforms and new reform initiatives announced in coming months. The Chinese government will likely stimulate growth even as it reforms. This will support equities not just in China, but much of Asia x Japan as well. Well, that's a wrap for now. With that, I thank you for joining us for another episode of the DBS View.